Good Monday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update. Apologies for the connection issues a few minutes ago, but we were trying to, I guess, get too much data to go down a small video stream. Thank you, Internet providers, for that. We're seeing, again, some pretty quiet conditions in the Mid-South for right now, but we're also going to be, again, seeing the potential for some more problems from a visitor in the Gulf of Mexico, which could be, again, causing some more problems as we go into around the next couple of days. If you have any plans to travel to the Gulf Coast anytime soon, especially anywhere, say, between west of Pensacola, Florida, and then back into and around the area of, say, uh, just New Orleans as a general area for right there, definitely want to think about changing your plans or at least being as highly adaptable as you possibly can because we may be seeing some evacuation orders issued in the course of the very near future for some of the Gulf Coast states as Tropical Storm Gordon approaches the area. Not to let our guard down, but there may be some more problems brewing into and around the areas of the Atlantic in the next few days. We'll keep our eyes on that for you coming up here in just a little bit as well. If you've got any questions about the forecast, drop them into the comments section, especially if you've got uh, anything involving weather reports from around the area another sticky humid day across the mid-south and a pretty quiet and muggy one for tonight again the forecast going right on in through the red bar right here or you can pick up the forecast available at wreg.com slash weather we'll have more coming up tonight with news channel 3's jim jaggers on the news at 10 and of course todd demers will have more on your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on news channel 3 daybreak let's go ahead and get going and show you again what's happening way on down to the south of us. You're looking at the uh, radar from around Tampa St. Pete and you can see again some pretty healthy amounts of rainfall already making its way into and around the area of portions of southwest Florida. Uh, again, this is going to be sort of the beginning portions of some of that rainfall. We can't see everything here, but you can right into and around the uh, lower about 8 o'clock portion of the circle see kind of a broad and not very well structured eye taking place. And it looks like more strengthening is going to be taking place as this thing goes up and toward the Gulf Coast in the course of the rest of tonight and also again into tomorrow. So this is the beginnings of what could become Hurricane Gordon in about the next roughly 24 hours or so. So it's a been a disorganized mass of showers and thunderstorms out there, but it will be changing a lot into about the next 24 hours as it gets over that warmer water and begins to develop. So this is going to be something that really uh, needs to be watched out there. Let's go right to the source of the information. Again, the National Hurricane Center is where we pay attention to a lot of this information out there and you can see again the entire area of the Atlantic including Gordon over here again close to Florida out to around the area of the rest of the Atlantic we've got again Florence out to around the area close to uh, almost mid-ocean pretty much and then right beyond that looking a little bit farther into around just off the coast of Africa we've also got a new visitor out here doesn't have a name yet, but it does show some pretty healthy amounts of promise, and we'll be talking more about that coming up here in just a little bit. But let's focus on the immediate issue for right now. Of course, Gordon is a tropical storm for the time being, and the latest information has this system going over, again, some very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. What does that mean? It means that these storm systems need warm water to develop, and as they move over that, that's a very good power supply for them. That's what they need is warm, moist, buoyant air helping to stir these things up. And as it gets closer to the Gulf Coast, notice the dark circles right there to where it says S, that's tropical storm, H indicates hurricane, and this thing could be a category one storm as it makes landfall, it looks like, somewhere about early in the morning on Wednesday. And that goes right between Pensacola and New Orleans. But the worst of the worst in that red shaded area is going to be that right quadrant of the hurricane between roughly 12 and 3 o'clock on the clock scale. That's where the winds really come around very quickly and can be very devastating. And that's exactly where this is going to wind up at. So east of New Orleans, west of Pensacola, that's going to be the worst of the worst. But anywhere in that blue shaded area with hurricane watches taking place, this is something that, again, I would be watching with a lot of interest uh, in there at this time. 
Walterine Miller Morgan, this is moving a little fast. Uh, yes, it's starting to pick up a little bit of steam as this thing continues to uh, move on forward. It's been driven forward pretty quickly by high pressure out over the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and so it's gotten kind of a boost moving pretty quickly here, and it's going to continue to head again close to the northwest at about maybe 15 miles per hour. It's not exactly as fast as other storms, but it is at moving at a healthy clip, and that's why conditions have to be rushed to completion for preparation anywhere around the Gulf Coast. So anywhere between Houston and Tampa St. Pete at this point in time is something that really needs to be watched with a lot of interest. And especially just if you're going to be around this area, again, keep in mind that it's going to be uh, the winds could pick up very easily into and around uh, portions of the area here to where we could see winds of around tropical storm force. Uh, anywhere between, again, Houston all the way back over to around Florida, and that's moving on up this direction uh, very easily to around the Gulf Coast state. So we are looking at some pretty uh, breezy winds becoming rapidly damaging. Uh, some of the scans were showing gusts of around 68 miles per hour in parts of the area there, so uh, this is something that we could be able to see for now. Uh, Bobby Midget from AM730. Welcome back, sir. Hope you had a good uh, Labor Day holiday with you and Mr. Josh over there. And yes, we'll be back on there tomorrow. Active in the Atlantic? Yes, absolutely. We'll talk more about that coming up here again in just a little bit. Tropical storm force winds are going to be uh, one thing to worry about. We also have storm surge to where we could be looking at some waves kicking up over portions of the Gulf Coast area. Storm surge warnings are now in effect for a good portion of the Gulf Coast from Louisiana all the way back over to around Mobile Bay. And otherwise, storm surge watches are in effect in the light purple area. That means that we've got, again, the potential of maybe three to four foot waves coming up on the beach, which is going to make it very dangerous to go down and wade in the tides or do anything in the way of trying to surf. Not a good idea as all that water gets stacked up. It's got to go someplace and that's got to go right back out into the ocean. So we could be looking at some pretty good amounts of rip tides in this area. So something to think about there. We also stand the possibility in the orange shaded area from around just west of Mobile to almost around Jackson, uh, Mississippi, we could be seeing the potential of maybe four to six inches of rainfall. So we're talking about some pretty heavy amounts of rain and that could cause some flash flooding in this area. Now, notice at this time, north of all this, this does not appear to be a major flash flooding threat for the Mid-South. So that in and of itself is decently good news. But again, if you're planning on traveling down this direction, you really got to watch and see what's going on with this. Now, over the next couple of days, again, the National Weather Service and the uh, Lower Mississippi River Forecast Center, uh, a lot of other agencies are looking for the potential of some flash flooding, and that's exactly where we're going to be looking at this in the next couple of days. Southeast Arkansas, Northeast Louisiana, much of southern Mississippi, and down into northeast Louisiana along and north of Lake Pontchartrain. That in that red shaded area is going to be one of the best locations for, again, anything involving flash flooding in the next couple of days. So that's going to be something else to watch. So we're talking about storm surge. We're talking about winds. We're talking about possible damage. We may be talking about, again, uh, severe weather. It's going to be one of those things to where we could see a lot of activity going on uh, into this location. So if you have plans to go down to the Gulf Coast for a uh, quick holiday, again, last few days of the next week coming up, maybe taking a quick summer vacation, you may want to think about going somewhere else or postponing travel. Yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it's a pain to have to redo all that type of stuff. But if it's your safety on the line, that's going to be one of the main things that you really need to pay attention to on things like that out there just to be on the safe side. All right, let's go back from the Gulf of Mexico and take a look at the tropics in general. You're looking at a larger map of the entire Atlantic. Again, Gordon back over the area uh, into and around uh, portions of areas close to the Gulf of Mexico. Let me get my pointer over here so I can see what's going on. Gordon all the way over here, moving up again toward the southern coast states. We also have Florence into and around the area of the basically mid-Atlantic. It is not expected to be that much of a problem. Uh, in weather nickname parlance, it's called a fish storm. 
because it's only going to be bothering the fish. So there's little, if anything, that's going to be a problem with this one. And all those S's in the middle say that it's going to be nothing but a tropical storm. So good news on that. Bermuda might have a problem here in the next couple of days. Now, there's other things happening between Florence and Africa. There is another system starting to develop here, just spinning off the coast of West Africa. That's what happens with these things. The storms develop over Africa, move off the coast into the ocean. They have that nice warm water for fuel. They don't have any friction from any land surfaces, and that thing just keeps right on going, spinning around very quickly, and that helps to lower the pressure, and that helps to get these storms going. So zooming in on that particular location, my cursor will help me on this one. What we're looking at is, again, according to the National Hurricane Center, uh, looks like this thing is going to, again, be developing into the course of the next couple of days. Next five days, by this next weekend, we could easily have a new tropical storm. This could be our H storm for the year. That's not Hector. That was in the Pacific. There are different name lists for the different oceans out there. So we could see a new storm system easily developing out of this one just off the coast of Africa and heading out into the ocean. So it's now just starting to get very busy out there and will continue that direction out there for right now. Uh, Candy Taylor Baker, will this impact, let me see, where's that? Shreveport, two point typeface and bifocals don't work too well. Uh, let's take a look at that area one more time and show you again the Gordon in the next couple of days. Looks like it's going to be going right close to that area, mainly north of that area. So most of the rainfall should be pushed up into southern Mississippi. As we look into and around the area in and around where Shreveport is in the northwest part of the state, it does not appear that we're going to be seeing again a lot of problems from this thing in and around here. But once again, that could be something that uh, bring some at least gusty winds and possibly some heavy rainfall uh, into that location. So that's something to watch out for, but I don't think they're going to be getting uh, too much of a major problem from this at this point. So good uh, news on that for right now. Again, that's Gordon. We'll keep our eyes on that into overnight. Here in the Mid-South, the main threat again from Gordon is going to be heavy rain and maybe some strong thunderstorms according to the National Weather Service as we get into and around the area of the next couple of days. So we'll be watching that at News Channel 3, so keep it tuned for more information there. Again, the storm system coming up from the Gulf of Mexico will be bringing more rain with it, but a new cold front heading across the Plains states might do a good job of helping to escort what's left of Gordon off to the north and east. So that hopefully should get rid of a lot of the problems heading out that particular direction. Low temperatures tonight in the lower 70s. Another steamy one into tomorrow with temperatures going back into around the lower 90s once again. Low temperatures Tuesday night again in the Mid-South not doing much better than the lower 70s. Chances of rain really don't start to make their way into the area until we hit about Wednesday afternoon and evening. So we could see best potential for rainfall south of I-40, and that also will accompany some very warm and muggy conditions. Upper 80s for highs on Wednesday. Rain potential slacks off a little bit on Wednesday night, and then gives us again more chances of rainfall going into Thursday, with highs on Thursday in the mid to upper 80s, and another pretty good widespread light chance of rainfall Thursday night. Low temperatures Thursday night in the lower 70s, and highs on Friday a little better, not by much, but upper 80s to lower 90s, and chances of rain will be sticking around the area all the way through the course of the rest of the next week. Welcome to everybody else for checking in uh, for this evening on Facebook. Apologies for the connection issues a little while ago, uh, trying to make certain that everything is uh, working properly so that everybody can tune in. I think I need to add another layer of tinfoil to the receiver for tonight. Make certain you stay tuned to my Facebook, Twitter, and other social media pages, and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on. Join me tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. We'll have an update with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live so you can get an idea as to what's going on uh, with the forecast into tomorrow morning as we see again some changes out there in the next couple of days. If you're out of town and can't pick up the broadcast, Pick them up on the internet at talkbacklivenetwork.org and listen in for some sports chat extraordinaire with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. 
some great guests out there and going to be keeping you updated on what's going on with a lot of sports in the next few weeks. So definitely a place to be and call in with your questions as well into the next few weeks as well. Rob Smith, good in South Haven. Thank you very much uh, for checking in. Good evening in Jonesboro. Andrew Butler, uh, everybody else checking in again for this morning or this evening. Glad to have you along for the ride. I'll keep you updated and have another update on the forecast. Uh, hopefully tomorrow morning, depending again on whether or not the uh, internet connection issues continue. We'll see about that. And of course, we'll keep you updated as well here at WREG.com slash weather. And also don't forget News Channel 3's Todd Demers on the air bright and early tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 with a complete update. Live and direct from House Onik, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and a lot more coming up on News Channel 3 online at WREG.com slash weather. Thanks for joining us.